Can you declutter your home without having to turn into a minimalist? In this video, you'll learn how to declutter your home without adopting a minimalist lifestyle, making your space tidy and functional. You know, having a clutter-free home can be incredibly freeing, but it's often associated with minimalism, which can be intimidating. Many people think that decluttering means getting rid of everything they own, but that's not necessarily true. You can have a beautiful, organized home without sacrificing your personal style or the things that bring you joy. We'll explore practical tips and strategies that allow you to keep what you love while still creating a more organized and serene environment. We'll dive into the world of decluttering without the pressure of minimalism so you can create a space that truly reflects your personality. The first step in decluttering is understanding what you want to achieve. What does your ideal living space look like? What kind of atmosphere do you want to create? Think about how you want to feel when you're in your home. Do you want to feel calm and relaxed or energized and motivated? Once you have a clear vision of what you want, you can start making intentional decisions about what you want to keep and what you can let go of. It's not about getting rid of everything. It's about curating a space that reflects your values, your personality, and your goals. You can also designate specific spaces for specific items, like a certain drawer for your paperwork or a certain shelf for your books. This helps keep clutter at bay and makes it easier to find what you need. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more videos like this with practical tips to help declutter your spaces. Another tip is to set a timer for a quick decluttering session. This could be as short as 10 or 15 minutes, and you can challenge yourself to see how much you can get done in that time. This is a great way to get started if you're feeling overwhelmed, and it can give you a sense of accomplishment and motivation. You can also enlist the help of a friend or family member to keep you accountable and make decluttering more fun. Having someone to talk to and laugh with can make the process so much more enjoyable. Another strategy is to focus on one area at a time, rather than trying to tackle your entire home at once. This can help you feel more focused and in control, and it can make the process less overwhelming. You can also try using a maybe box when you're decluttering. This is a box where you put items that you're not sure about keeping or getting rid of. You can set a deadline like six months, and if you haven't used the item by then, you get rid of it. Decluttering can also be a great opportunity to make some extra money by selling items you no longer need or want. You can have a yard sale, sell items online, or use an app to sell gently used items. One of my favorite decluttering methods is the 15-minute declutter challenge. This is where you set a timer for 15 minutes, and you challenge yourself to declutter as much as you can in that time. You can focus on one area, like your dresser or your kitchen counter, and see how much you can get done. After the timer goes off, take a step back and look at what you've accomplished. You can be amazed at how much you can get done in just a short amount of time, and it's a great way to build momentum and motivation to keep going. The 15-minute declutter challenge is also a great way to get started if you're feeling overwhelmed, because it's a small, manageable goal that you can achieve in a short amount of time. And it can give you a sense of accomplishment and confidence that you can build on. If you have reached this far in the video, Kindly hit that like and subscribe button so that this video reaches more people in need of it. Thank you. Many people struggle with clutter but feel overwhelmed by the idea of minimalism, fearing it means getting rid of everything they love. They worry that if they get rid of too much, they'll lose their sense of identity or their connection to their past. I completely understand that it's daunting to think about parting with items that hold sentimental value or that you've grown accustomed to having around. Clutter doesn't have to be a part of your identity, and it's not a reflection of your worth as a person. You can still be creative, eclectic, and stylish while having an organized home. It's all about finding that balance and creating systems that work for you, not against you. We'll also explore ways to declutter your closet, your kitchen, and your living areas without feeling like you're sacrificing your personal style. You'll learn how to create a capsule wardrobe, how to organize your kitchen utensils, and how to create a cozy living room that still reflects your eclectic taste. So remember that decluttering doesn't mean sacrificing your style or possessions. It's about making intentional choices. It's about creating a space that truly reflects who you are, what you value, and what you aspire to be. If you found these tips helpful, be sure to check out my other videos for more home organization ideas and share your own decluttering tips in the comments.